few things actually. Um, I'm really always curious around how people uh, describe themselves in maybe like a LinkedIn profile or uh, you know even in their short little Twitter Twitter bio, for example. Um, I think that says a lot about someone. I, I'm always kind of also looking for uh, a balance in a healthy interest in what's going on in our industry and so you know you can kind of see that there's um, a curiosity and sort of this general sense of like you know wanting to know what's going on wanting to kind of be on the cusp of things but um, but maybe there's you know maybe they're into camping and you know they have a family or something like there's just you know it's not like that sort of obsessive kind of mentality I guess and, uh, and then when it actually comes to someone's skills, uh, I'm a little bit more of like a potential-based thinker than I am in having the immediate skill set. So if, uh, if someone is smart and articulate and maybe they, their last role was not the same job description of what I'm hiring for, but um, you can just kind of see like when someone's reading through it, like that they get it or in a conversation that they get it and you're, you're like, okay, this is gonna be like, this much of a learning curve for you and you're gonna own it once you get there so yeah so that's kind of what I think hmm. like look for I guess yeah, okay. yeah tell me a little bit about the, the culture you mentioned some aspects of it do you deliberately nurture that in a certain way does it happen on its own what, what happens <laughs> what happens in this magical ecosystem uh, yeah I mean there's a few of my influences for sure uh, I'm into adventure traveling. I you know, love food. I love art. Uh, I feel like a lot of the people here share some of those similar interests. I mean, um, we're a big dog culture, so we have that going on. And we've had like you know a dog trainer come in and train uh, three or four of the puppies that were here at one point. And a um, few of the team members do aerobics in the space after work. Like so, there's just little things, uh, but. Yeah, I guess if to my earlier point around, you know, when I'm like looking at someone who would be a good fit here, I'm really kind of trying to understand them as a person and how they would relate to the rest of the group. And so, yeah, and that's how it's kind of formed naturally. People just generally can see, oh, so and so is into this. That's great. Let's do that. And then the next thing you know, they've got their own project going. And so, yeah, it's fun. You ever see culture as a differentiator or some kind of advantage? Yeah. Because you know everybody's here to pay, you know, pay to here to do a job, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a lot of responsibility to our clients, and so everyone takes that seriously. But you can't take it too seriously. Um, so I'd rather be surrounded by people who have a sense of humor and uh, I don't know, just generally a different view of the world and on life um, because that just dramatically changes the outcome of the work itself mm -hmm. and, uh, and elevates generally the, the mood and the excitement and yeah, grows stronger connections between people. Sarah, the, um, running a business is not all a bed of roses and sometimes you make mistakes. Are there any mistakes that you remember specifically that have taught you a good lesson that you want to share with us? Yes, not letting someone go when you know you need to let them go, 100%. Oh my God, if there's anything a business owner should learn, it's it's the worst thing really is to have to sit down and do that. But, uh, but sometimes when you're starting off and you're just kind of figuring out like how this all fits and how this all works and you've got someone who's just not quite fitting in or um, is letting the team down or whatever like there's so many different variations you have to you have to take care of it or else it will haunt you yeah so for sure that was an early lesson um, what else uh, having a little uh, leadership by empathy as well so there's a lot of great examples of successful people out there who tend to have like maybe a bit of a hard edge to them and you think well maybe that's how leaders should be you know sometimes you just got to be cut and dry and you have to give the hard feedback and mm -hmm. that kind of thing and that has its place to a degree but an empathetic approach goes 
way beyond that and uh, earns you a different type of respect. And so I experimented with that in the early days and I thought, okay, I'll just be a hard ass about this because, you know, this isn't right. And, um, and I think the, the look I got from someone was just totally like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, who are you right now? Um, and yeah, and I thought, oh, that was, real, that was a fail. Don't ever do that again. So yeah. And, uh, and also uh, around the actual inner workings of the business when it comes to money, um, take the time to really understand uh, what your tools are. Because I got caught up in just bringing the business in and getting the work done and then not really taking the time to understand what, what the tools were that were kind of the bedrock of, you know, building the agency in the early days. And if you have that at the beginning stages, you've got a leg up and that will help enormously. So. Yeah. so how do you find the balance of the harmony? Like how do you deal with stressful situations when you can't, you said you have a, a husband who's in a similar kind of role yeah. that you are? Um, tell us a little bit about those harmonies, how you figure that stuff out. Harmonies. Well, his, or lack thereof. Yeah. Well, his role's a bit different. He's the CD at his agency, and um, I, I'm definitely more like uh, operations, business development, HR, mm -hmm. like, you know, all those hats, whereas he's, uh, his company is big enough that people can, he has people to do that, which is great for him. Um, so harmonies is really just sometimes about a little bit of patience, mm -hmm. a little bit of like, uh, you know, if I need to rip something off of him, he's he's happy to kind of give me a moment to get it off my chest, but then uh, great at just giving me the pragmatic advice in order to just get it done, which is, is helpful. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's, there's other things though. It's like balancing my times is challenging. There's a lot of distractions and, uh, you know, setting, trying to set a day where you focus on one thing is not entirely realistic. So I'm still working on that. <laughs> Do you, uh, you say that adventure travel is one of the ways that you distract yourself? Yeah. Maybe that's not the best way to put it, but um, tell us about how you blow up steam and nurture your soul. Yeah. Uh, well, a couple ways. So I'm really into motorbiking. So uh, I try and do as many trips as I can on my bike. So last year, um, I rode from Vancouver to Panama, and that was that's a whole new interview. Yeah, that is a whole new interview. Yeah, that was that was excellent. And the reason why it was it was great um, because I know a lot of people think like, well, if you're in this high stress environment, why wouldn't you want to go sit on a beach? And I did sit on a beach you know, a couple days in there, but uh, I prefer to be challenged in ways that I am not usually um, when I'm at home. And it just totally helps, uh, I don't know, level the playing field a bit for me in, in like the greater perspective of the world and, uh, and helps me deal with stress when I get back in a completely different way. Like suddenly something that was an issue before isn't really a big deal anymore. So, so the biking um, and then just physical activity is like on the top of my list. Like I work out with a personal trainer two days a week. I do um, swimming twice a week. I'm trying to train for my first triathlon in July. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, camping, just anything that kind of gets me out and dealing with like basic things like my own breathing, uh, my own physical limitations, uh, not my intellectual limitations, and uh, and also just basic problem solving, like where am I gonna sleep tonight? What am I gonna eat? And uh, you know, am I gonna be cold or wet? Like I just like to really boil it down to the bare essentials, and that to me is totally rejuvenating. It's mm, awesome. Yeah. There are um, a lot of ambiguities about the industry we're in. Um, what do you think is the most interesting thing ahead for our industry, and how does make fit into that? Yeah. Well, I've read a lot lately uh, this argument about. Um, the value of the digital agency in the future, uh, in the, the, the argument as to whether or not the old traditional advertising model I think is still out there, but nobody's really solved that problem. Um, in your recession made an, a big impact on uh, our clients' spending, and so uh, and I think people are still trying to figure out um, 
you know, how best to succeed in, in the digital space with, uh, with their marketing efforts and stuff. So, uh, but with all of that, I still see an opportunity because nobody is an expert in everything and certainly our clients aren't. So I'd like to think that um, if we can continue as make to just be a partner in that sense and uh, bring, bring those things that they don't have to the table, then there will always be a need um, for what we do and a demand for it. And uh, as long as we execute you know, to the highest quality that we can, uh, that will just um, continue to propel our reputation. And to me, that's like a good model for success. Uh, I definitely look at other agencies that are experimenting with um, developing platforms and you know really getting inventive with their their kind of business development and I think that that's really exciting I would, I would definitely love to explore those options uh, but I feel just personally that I have to still like achieve a few more milestones for make before I can kind of get my head into the next thing. Um, yeah, but that's, that's sort of my perspective now, I guess. Yeah. Lastly, what do you want to be remem remembered for? <laughs> like in life? <laughs> hmm. Uh, probably just... Uh, just being a reliable and good person, that would be awesome if people thought about me that way. Yeah. Sarah, thank you for your time. Thank you. We good?